Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our Luna4 webinar today, where we will present you how to get all information from your tissue sample with less complexity. During this presentation, we will introduce our automated solution to perform multiplexing immunohistochemistry assays and spatial genomic analysis. My name is Sarah Milosevic, Sales Specialist at Luna4 Technologies, and I will be your speaker. Today, the agenda of our presentation will be divided in three major parts. First, I will present you our microfluidic technology for tissue analysis. In the second part, we will discuss about two multiplexing immunofluorescence assays technique, the TSA-based multiplexing IF and the sequential multiplexing IF. In the next part, I will present you the RNAScope assays, an in-situ hybridization technique. At the end of the presentation, a live Q&A session will take place. I will be pleased during this time to reply to all your questions. Our company, luna for Technologies, is a Swiss firm born with the vision of bringing omics like an approach to in-situ tissue analytics for cancer research. Founded in 2014 as a spin-off of EPFL, we developed an innovative patented microfluidic tissue processor to automate sophisticated assays. We enable comprehensive data extraction faster than current techniques and proposed a wide range of applications for both protein and nucleic acid analysis. Since the middle of the 90s, tissue-based assays evolved a lot. Immunohistochemistry assays that allow the detection of protein target within cell in tissue context is based on an antigen-antibody reaction whereas primary antibodies is the most critical reagents. Immunohistochemistry can be performed in a single or duplex manner. With a permanent growing need to follow multiple markers, we observed the emergence of multiplexing immunofluorescence staining. In addition to all the detection of a higher number of markers, multiplexing IF assays offer the possibility to quantify the level of protein expression. In-situ hybridization is very powerful technique used in clinic as well as in research to detect nucleic acid targets. The assay is performed with the specific design probe and visualized using a bright film microscope. As the primary antibody is critical for immunohistochemistry, the design probe is critical for in-situ hybridization. In-situ hybridization essay requires the design of a specific probe, but also a lot of condition adjustment to validate the use of the probe. From the probe set design, the probe validation, the quality control of the essay, from the pretreatment to the stringency conditions, all steps are important to confirm the specificity of the essay. It requires a strong technical expertise and several days of work. In 2011, Ergenoscope technology appears as a revolutionary technique that brought a lot of possibilities to support in-situ hybridization essays. Highly sensitive and user-friendly, RNAscope assay allows single cell and single molecule detection. Despite the fact that these techniques can be run with high throughput automate, they stay for the majority of research lab performed manually. As I'm sure you know, challenges are omnipresent in research laboratories performing tissue-based assay. In most laboratories, all assay steps are mainly performed manually. It increases the assay's complexity, impacts experiment due to many potential assay steps variation. Moreover, many novel techniques require high precision steps with highly controlled temperature, incubation time that are really hard to control manually. 
looking for automated solution can also lead to a lot of complexity. In fact, automated instruments available on the market are all bulky and designed to accommodate users performing standard assays on large patches of sample. In research, possibilities are limited due to the closed nature of most instruments reagent-wise. It looks obvious then that there is a need for a tissue basis assay solution that can be open, flexible, and precise. This is where our technology can support your needs. We now present you the core of our innovation. Our technology is based on a microfluidic chip called Microfluidic Tissue Processor, MTP, or just staining chip. The staining chip is composed of a set of microfluidic channels designed to deliver and wash reagents on the vicinity of the sample. The staining chip is simply clamped over a standard histological glass slide, forming a closed chamber of reaction over the tissue. Reagents are driven into the hermetic chamber and removed from it by a highly controlled pressure. Thanks to the pressure, the liquid exchange is very rapid, and this is why we called our technology Fast Fluidic Exchange, or FFX. The perfect sealing between the histological glass slide and the staining chip offers a highly controlled environment. A heating element is placed below the slide and allows the precise control of the temperature at any time, as well as rapid temperature changes thanks to the limited heat capacity of the assembly. As previously mentioned, the active delivery of reagents through the hermetic chamber is driven by controlled pressure. But what is the difference between a standard antibodies incubation and our FFX technology? To perform a standard tissue incubation, reagents are simply dispensed using a pipette over the tissue. To obtain a good staining, the antibody diffusion is needed and requires a long incubation time. Indeed, interaction between antibodies and antigen generates a gradient of antibodies concentration, leading to heterogeneous staining over the tissue sample. With the FFX technology, and thanks to a continuous and oscillating flow of antibody and reagents into the hermetic chamber, we minimize the creation of a gradient of concentration and we drastically decrease the incubation time. In order to validate our technology, we worked on a large range of applications. First, we have demonstrated that microfluidic-based immunofluorescence assays with short incubation time can lead to a great quantification of fluorescent signal compared to conventional immunohistochemistry assays and signal saturation. Using our microfluidic technology, we classified ambiguous R2 status of breast carcinomas compared to fish positive and negative data previously observed. We demonstrated the ability to perform extremely rapidly chromogenic and fluorescent stainings and generate great data for different markers, both on FFPE and frozen section. We confirmed the preservation of DNA and RNA after having performed several stainings, giving us the possibility to use our samples for additional studies like NGS assays. We validated the use of our FFX technology to run fish analysis. We also confirmed the capabilities of the FFX technology to run multiplex IF staining 
using tyramide signal amplification based multiplexing assays in combination with the Opal kits from Akoya. Continuously working on new assay development, we recently described how it is possible to integrate our technology with an image acquisition system to perform multiplex assays in a sequential fashion. All data and publication are available on our website, but we will be also pleased to send you the detail if required. Having the possibility to get a fast delivery and removal of reagents through the hermetic chamber. Having the possibility to obtain a homogeneous repartition of reagents and antibody over the tissue section and having the possibility to pricelessly control the temperature will lead to many advantages. First, the most important for every scientist, the high quality of staining. With an unmatched uniformity, a very nice tissue preservation, you get a new way of work with nice and reproducible data that is always so important in science. Working hard, to get samples and to do not keep the best tissue preservation is always a challenge. But we also know that usually in science, we just need to get it fast. And thanks to our pressure driven technology, we dramatically reduce the turnaround time required to run tissues based assays. To perform staining using our FFX technology, we have developed our first autumn stainer called Lapsat Research. The Lapsat Research is a fully open automated tissue staining platform that makes the microfluidic based staining assays accessible to all researchers. Our auto stainer contains eight small volume reagents reservoir, 1.5 or 2 ml append of tubes, and four larger buffer solution reservoirs. 50 ml falcon tubes. The microfluidic chip and the slides are inserted and clamped by a handle into what we call the stainer in the center of the instrument. The precise volume of reagent delivered thanks to the pressure is perfectly controlled by a microfluidic distribution chip placed on the top of the instrument. The staining chip is designed for a single use. The distribution chip can be used for 10 staining or be replaced every day. The LabSat is a very simple instrument and was developed specifically with the goal of fitting the need of researchers. In fact, it is capable to automate a wide spectrum of non-standard and sophisticated essays that can be set and customized via its software. It's fully open and works with any of the shelf reagents. Having seen in detail our microfluidic solution and our auto stainer for tissue analytics, we will now have an introduction on multiplexing IFSAs. I will present you the first technique to perform multiplexing IF staining, the tyramide assay signal amplification followed by sequential immunofluorescence multiplexing assays. As I previously mentioned, the need in science and clinical above a lot. To develop more precise diagnostic tests, we need to track a higher number of markers in a spatial and morphological context. In the field of immuno-oncology, there is an increasing trend to understand the complexity of the tumor microenvironment thanks to the immunophenotyping. Multiplexing immunofluorescence allows for the detection of multiple antigens on the same tissue section. It provides colocalization and spatial orientation of proteins, which facilitates an accurate determination of the target's subcellular localization identification of multiple cell types, and resolution of the relative proximity of biomarkers. 
multiplex immunofluorescence assays provide information on the expression levels of biomarkers while increasing the number of biomarkers that can be visualized simultaneously on a single slide. Thus, the advantage on multiplexing immunofluorescence assays can be expressed as better information about the tissue microenvironment while conserving the sample. Immunofluorescence assays can be performed by direct staining using primary antibody directly conjugated to a fluorescence molecule or indirectly using a couple of primary and secondary antibody. In basic immunofluorescence stainings, indirect pathway is the most common as it helps to increase the signal in particular when the targeted protein is not much expressed. In multiplexing immunofluorescence studies, the biggest limitation will come from the fluorescent microscope and fluorescent molecule were bent. To bypass this limitation, the development of spectral microscopy opened a new way to perform immunofluorescence staining. Indeed, spectral microscopy allows the good detection of fluorescent molecules, which exhibit another layer of their emission wavelengths. Based on fluorescent properties, TSA multiplexing immunofluorescence use a set of fluorescent molecules coupled to ceramide radical. Sequential immunofluorescence staining is based on indirect staining but required a repetition of staining imaging elution cycle. During my presentation, I will first focus on the TSA-based assay that can allow you to perform up to six markers staining plus contour staining. The use of Teramide Signal Amplification System, TSA, in multiplexing immunofluorescence provides advantages of a traditional method. The advantages include the ability to use antibodies from the same species to detect low abundance proteins. Teramide Signal Amplification uses Osradish peroxidase conjugated secondary antibody and inactive tyramide fluorophores. The HRP enzyme will catalyze the conversion of the inactive tyramide into a reactive radical who will covalently bind to nearly tyrosine residues. TSA labeling procedure consists of the following steps. First, incubation of the primary antibody and secondary antibody conjugated to HRP. Addition of inactivated tyramide substrate conjugated to a fluorophore. The HRP conjugated to the secondary antibody catalyzes the conversion of labeled tyramide into the reactive radical form that will covalently bind to nearby tyrosine residue, providing high density labeling. The primary secondary antibody is then eluted by high temperature and the second marker. Detection is done using the same principle. To perform the TSA-based multiplexing on LabSat, we use the TSA detection kit from Akoya, containing the TSA fluorophores of different wavelengths, the HRP-bound secondary antibodies, as well as the blocking and antibody diluent. We developed and performed the staining for six markers plus contour staining. The development and the optimization of the TSA multiplex IF staining is based on four points. First, the singleplex staining to validate every antibody selected. Second, the uniformity optimization. Third, the antibody elution to control its efficiency as well as the impact of the treatment on the tissue morphology. And last but not least, the multiplexing staining, where we combine all desired staining sequentially with an elution step between each staining. To validate the TSA multiplex staining using our LabSat auto stainer, we selected the following six markers POXP3, PDL1, PD1, CD68 and CD8 to perform the staining on FFPE human tonsil tissue. 
we will now see in details every step of the staining optimization. Let's start with the singleplex optimization. For the singleplex optimization, three steps are tested. The antigen retrieval treatment, temperature and pressure setting, the reagent incubation, temperature, duration and flow optimization, and finally, the primary antibodies concentration and substrate with the tritation of the antibody and the opal reagent. For each marker tested, we validated the use of our selected antibodies. We then verified all working conditions, such as antibody concentration, incubation time, or antigen retrieval method. We obtained high signal to background ratio for all markers. The mean of normalized intensity presented here were calculated using three regions of interest per slide per marker. To complete our study, we performed reproducibility studies using nine slides of FFPE tonsil tissue. We observed for all markers less than 15% of signal variability underlining the effective automation of protocol of the system. We will see now how we validated the uniformity of our staining. On the signal uniformity aspect, we took the advantage of LAPSAPT active control of the flow. Instead of performing a gradient incubation, we used the dynamic incubation method constantly refreshing the chamber content. By doing so, we decreased the signal drop from 30 to 60%. Antibody elution validation step. The elution step consists in the removal of the primary and secondary antibodies complex from the tissue after each marker detection. To assess the method, we compared the signal obtained from a reference slide and a slide where we performed an elution step followed by a staining with the same secondary antibody. The antibody strip of method used on LAPSAT is high temperature cycle that provides a very efficient elution rate of 99% for all antibodies tested. As we can see here, on every image is acquired after elution. Let's see now the workflow to perform a six-plex staining using the LabSat. To perform a six-plex staining using the LabSat instrument, we created a fully automated staining protocol for six markers. Before running the staining, the tissue is prepared, dewaxed, and all reservoirs are loaded with all antibodies and buffer for the first markers. After the end of the first part of staining, consisting in antigen retrieval steps, blocking, staining with primary and secondary antibodies, addition of the tyramide fluorophore radical, and elution. Reagents are swapped and replaced with reagents needed for the last three markers. At the end of the protocol, the slide is mounted, cover slipped, and imaged. Taking in consideration the advantages of the TSA based ASA coupled to the advantages of our LabSat research instrument, we demonstrated the obtention of really great data. Here, we present you data we obtained from a six-plex staining performed in less than four hours and a half. The first region of interest, in the left, shows a germinal center close to a tonsillar crypt. The epithelium is clearly visible thanks to the detection of pansique in orange. This region of interest also shows a strong epithelial PDL1 expression in green, and in the same time, a weaker and punctate PDL1 expression in the germinal center, macrophages, which demonstrates the ability of the assay to capture the typical dynamic range of the marker. The second region of interest focuses on a region separating germinal center. There is a dense population of cytotoxic T-cells 
identified with the membranous expression of CD8 in magenta. Another T cell's population is well represented here, a regulatory T cell, visible thanks to the nuclear expression of FOXP3 in yellow. The region of interest 3 and 4 are centered on more mature germinal centers, the first one close to a tonsillar crypt, the second a bit further away. They both show abundant PD-1 expression in cyan on the membrane of centrocytes. Presence of CD68 positive cells in red, monocyte and macrophages is also clearly visible in those two regions of interest. To confirm our staining performance, we have validated our immuno-oncology panel in different tissue, consisting in PDL1, CD8, FOXP3, CD68, CK, and PD1. Here we show you an example of the protocol performed on tonsils that are optimized for non small cell lung carcinoma. We did some adjustment of the protocol with the increase of the antigen retrieval temperature and the concentration of the OPAL 540. I will now present you two publications where the LabSat autostainer was used to perform TSA multiplexing staining. Low-grade endometrial carcinomas, EC, are the most frequent gynecological malignancies in Europe. After surgery and radio and or chemotherapy, 10% of patients progress with local or distant relapse. Currently, we are lacking a better knowledge of pathway that govern tumorigenesis of low-grade early-stage EC. In this publication, Lopez Janeiro and his colleagues addressed the question of which molecular pathway has dysregulated in EC patients. This is an important point because this can support the characterization of low-grade early-stage EC through quantitative analysis of endometrial proteome from FFPE. To reply this question, they selected two cohorts of FFPE and fresh frozen section sample from patients to perform proteomic studies and pathway analysis. For proteomic studies, they performed a triplex TSA immunofluorescent staining for CD8 to follow cytotoxic T cells marker. CD8 as macrophage marker and cytokaratin as epithelial marker. In the two representative IC microphotograph, they observed higher immunofiltrates, red and yellow, in tumoral tissue compared to healthy tissue. The EC microenvironment is characterized by the huge myeloid infiltration in tumor tissue 1 compared to tumor tissue 2. The difference observed for these markers can support the characterization of low-grade, early-stage EC through quantitative analysis of endometrial proteome from FFPE. The immune-suppressive microenvironment affects efficacy of radioimmunotherapy in brain metastases. Thus, the success rate of standard therapies is limited in brain metastasis patient. In the publication, Nielsen and his collaborators wondering if it could be possible to combine application of radio and immunotherapy to modulate tumor immunity and overcome inhibitory effect. For this purpose, they decided to study the tumor development and detect the T cell presence or not. After the identification of T cells receptor, receptors repertoire and therapeutic targets, they performed a preclinical study on survival and tumor progression with a combination of radioimmunotherapy. The spatial distribution analysis was performed on multiplexed staining obtained with LabSat. Here you can see representative allo spatial plot on the left panel and multiplexed immunofluorescence images on mouse brain metastases on the right. T cells were stained with CD4 and CD8A, macrophages with CD16 and eBay1. 
TMEM110 and EPCAM were used as markers for microglia and epithelial cells respectively. CD4, CD8 T cells were localized closer to macrophages in brain metastases. This close proximity suggests that tumor-associated microphages play a critical role in regulating T cell activity in brain metastases. We will now see the sequential multiplex immunofluorescence for IPLEX protein study. Current challenge in immunofluorescence for scientists is the need to develop immunofluorescence panel of 20plex and above. Performing manually the type of assays can make the imaging acquisition intensive and time consuming. Moreover, processing one sample each time requires too much time to obtain all results. Performing a sequential multiplex IF for a huge amount of markers can be done easily using an automated imaging acquisition system that will reduce the user intervention and the total protocol time and a sample parallelization to reduce the assay development and the time to obtain the results. As mentioned previously, the sequential immunofluorescence multiplexing staining is a great way to perform this staining. We developed our next generation instrument called Comet. Our instrument is still under development. It's an all in one staining and imaging platform that integrates our microfluidic based staining with a fluorescent microscope. It can run extremely rapid hyperplex assay up to 40 plex in a fully automated fashion with four slides capacity. Since it's an open system, it allows the use of label-free off-the-shelf or custom primary antibodies. It's based on the same FFX technology with the next generation of microfluidic staining chip, allowing the staining and the image acquisition without removing the sample from the stainer. Performing multiplex sequential IF can lead to rapid immunostaining. Every sequential IF cycle consists on the incubation of two primary antibody, two secondary antibody, and constant staining. With our instrument, it can take 10 to 12 minutes. When the staining is finalized, the tissue is scanned through the imaging window of our microfluidic chip. 
No decoupling between the staining chip and the sample is required and the process is performed in an automated fashion. In data presented here, we see Before a multiplexing assay can be performed, we need to go through a series of steps of optimization. Our technology allows for playing with multiple parameters as temperature, incubation times, the use of a dynamic incubations to achieve more homogeneous stainings, perform multiple flushes, etc. To achieve a good multiplexing experiment, we make sure that we can remove the signal of every staining in order to avoid non-specific signal appearing downstream in the protocol. For this reason, every marker goes through an elution characterization step, where we make sure that at least 99% of the signal is removed. We compare the remaining fluorescence after elution to the autofluorescence of the tissue obtained prior to starting the optimization procedure. A similar background level indicates an efficient elution of secondary antibody from the tissue. Subsequently, we perform a control staining using only the secondary antibody and compare the fluorescence signal with our reference negative control. The scope of this step is to highlight any remaining primary antibodies after the elution. Once every marker in our panel has been characterized, we are ready to create a multiplexed protocol. In the example you can see here, 24 immune markers were stained on FFPE human tonsil. The scanning area was set to 4x4 4 4 mm squares and the total time of the experiment was 5 hours. We also used chromogenic reference for every marker at the benchmark for the areas we were expecting to see signal. Subsequently, we transferred our protocol to sample of non-small lung carcinomas and compared again with the chromogenic gold standard. We know that performing quantitative comparison between chromogenic and fluorescence image is not straightforward. So, we came up with two simple image processing algorithms that will allow us to determine the area of the tissue that was stained both in
is widely accepted to employ tonsil samples during the early optimization of immune markers due to the easy access of this tissue and the abundance of the expression markers. However, this comes with additional difficulties. Very often, we need to perform some reoptimization steps once we transfer to tissue specific. In some cases, only one or a few tissue types requires adaptation, while in other cases, a more general reoptimization is required. For example, this was our approach to transfer the seven markers panel from tonsil tissue to colorectal cancer, lung carcinoma, and melanoma. When we attempted the transfer of CD3 and CD4 markers, screening confirmed no need for further optimization on lung and melanoma. We increased the primary and secondary antibody concentration in colorectal choice tissue for optimal results. We will typically look at you can see here an image we obtained from a transfer we did from tonsil to colorectal cancer obtained with the collaboration of Professor Intis Lobeck from the University of Bern in Switzerland. We have optimized a sixplex panel on colorectal cancer with CD8, CD4, CK, CD3, Vimantin, and Ecaderin as a preliminary step toward a larger panel. In this case, we applied a background removal algorithm that was developed in house and that takes into account the autofluorescence of the tissue acquired automatically at the beginning of the essay. Images generated with the Comet instrument are exported in OMET format, making it possible to import for most tissue analytic tools. On the left hand side, we perform a cell segmentation using the Stardist algorithm on QPath. Then, we trained a classifier to recognize FOSP3 positive cells. On the right hand side, we used an AI based algorithm from ALO for cell segmentation on one of our comet images. After having seen the protein expression studies via the multiplexing assay, we will now talk about the nucleic acid detection, the in-situ hybridization technology with the RNAscope kit. The RNAscope assay is built on double Z probe design that allow for single RNA detection at single cell level with morphological context. It's virtually applicable for any RNA target in any tissue using universal assay conditions. With RNAscope technology, the signal amplification is really high and the background is suppressed. The standard target probes consist on a pool of around 20 double Z probes targeting a region of 1000 bases on the targeting RNA. Each Z target probe pair are designed to specifically hybridize the target molecule, but not the non-targeted one. Each target Z probe contains three elements. The lower region of the Z is the 18 to 25 base region, that is complementary to the target RNA. This sequence is selected for target-specific hybridization and uniform hybridization properties. A spacer sequence then links the two components of the probe. The upper region of the Z is a 14 base tail sequence. The two tails from a double Z probe pair forms a 28 base binding site for the preamplifier. The signal amplification is achieved by a cascade of hybridization events. First, the double set target probes hybridize to the RNA target. Then, the preamplifiers hybridize to the 20 base binding site formed by each double Z probe. Amplifiers are then binding to the multiple binding site on each preamplifier.
The advantages of the Arenascope probe design is first the sensitivity. The detection of each single RNA molecule requires only three double Z probes to bind the RNA target. The specificity, the double Z probe design prevents background noise and single Z probes binding to non-specific site will not produce a binding site for the preamplifier, thus preventing amplification of non-specific signal contributing to specificity. You can see here the workflow to perform RNAscope assay on FFPE samples using our LabSat autostainer. Here is represented all cycle of the experiment, included pretreatment, probabilization, amplification cycles, and signal detection. In gray are represented all the protocol steps that cannot be optimized on the microfluidic platform LabSat. The full RNAscope assay from pretreatment to counter staining was implemented on LabSat with the advantage of robust and reliable automation. With highly controlled temperature conditions, as well as reduced ends on time, we walked away opportunities to shorter total procedure time. The RNAscope workflow on LabSat is designed to guarantee the minimum numbers of users' interaction. In the manual tissue preprocessing, the user will initialize the instrument and load the reagents. LabSat will then run a fully automated protocol. Due to limited numbers of reservoirs, users' intervention is required to load the last four reagents needed for the second part of the protocol. After protocol completion, the slide can be retrieved from post-processing and imaging. This will take at least six hours and a half. The Arenascope assay was optimized on LabSat and demonstrated a well-preserved morphology of FFPE cytological and histological sample, a uniform staining across the section, detectable punctate signal dots, with excellent signal to background ratio comparable to the manual essay. The shorter turnaround time with respect to manual and other automated platform reduced first at 6.5 hours and then at 4.5 hours. The Arenascope 2.5 HD Brown essay automated on LabSat for FFPE ELA cells pellet resulted in specific and reproducible detection of the TBP positive control probe with the respect on undetectable negative control at the bottom panel being in both cases comparable to the manual reference as shown in the left panel. Automatization of the RNAscope assay on LabSat also showed an adequate detection of PPIB positive control probe equal to the manual reference shown in the upper panel, both for the standard and short panel, and multiple FFP blocks included brain, colon, kidney, liver, and spleen. Automated RNAscope 2.5 HD chromogenic in situ hybridization assay on LabSat were also performed for six different target probes, PD-1, PD-L1, MK67, FOXP3, FGFR3, and HPV on various FFPE human tissue, tonsil, breast cancer, colon cancer, and cervical. For all results, we observed adequate detection of multiple target probes for standard and shortener run comparable to manual staining. In the calculation of the time, the paraffinization and bluing mounting is not included. In conclusion of our RNA assay run in LabSat, we observed and proved the capability of our instrument to automate the RNAscope assay. 
we observed a very well preserved morphology of FFPE cytological and histological samples, a uniform staining across the section, and a readily detectable punctate signal dots with excellent signal to background ratio. The LabSat platform brings the benefits of shorter runtime and highly reproducible method in a compact device with a very highly controlled temperature conditions, shorter turnaround time with respect to manual and other automated platform, and a reduced hands on time and walk away opportunities. LabSat Research provides a simple and affordable benchtop automation solution for sophisticated assays like RNAscope, rendering it into a faster, easier, and highly reliable method. Now, let's go for the conclusion and outlook of our presentation. In conclusion, and take home message of our presentation, we first described the potential of our LabSat research instrument to perform automated staining in one single platform to do co-detection assays of proteins and genomics. We are always looking to work with new partners to further develop techniques, so please do not hesitate to contact me if you are interested. We also developed the potential of our next generation instrument, Comet, to perform high throughput IPLEX staining. It's now time for our Q&A session. Please submit your question. I will be pleased to answer it.